Doctor takes a journey out of time to the Cathedral of Contemplation in order to seek a little bit of advice about his future. However, the place looks ever so slightly familiar. In today's Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama review, I am of course going to be taking a look at the highly anticipated release Out of Time, as written by Matt Fitton. This episode stars David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor, alongside Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. It's not often that we get to say that within an audio drama review. Naturally, of course, I, like many other Big Finish fans, have been very excited to take a look at this release, and now it is finally here. So let's take a look at it, and more importantly, is it any good? Out of Time is available to be ordered now on the Big Finish website. The physical CD is £10.99 and the download is £8.99. The cover artist for this release is Simon Hollub and he's done an absolutely brilliant job. The director is Nicholas Briggs. The music has been composed by Howard Carter. The producer is David Richardson. Script editor Guy Adams. And the writer for this story is Matt Fitton. The duration of this episode is just over one hour long. And there is of course also a trailer that can be listened to on the Big Finish website. Naturally of course this release is not alone. There is two further releases in the range being released in 2021 and 2022, being The Gates of Hell and Wink, all of which can be ordered within a bundle, which I highly recommend if you are interested in the entirety of this series in order to save a little bit of cash. So I think one of the first things to address when it comes to Out of Time is the whole concept of fan service, as this release is undeniably a little bit of fan service, and every so often a bit of fan service is absolutely fine, especially with the model of Big Finish and you as a listener needing to purchase each and every release that you wish to listen to because they don't offer a subscription service in a sense. There is a few bundles here and there. However, if you want to listen to a standalone box set, you have to buy that product, and every so often a little bit of fan service helps to lift up sales and the likes of Out of Time will undeniably be drawing in a lot of attention from people who have never listened to Big Finish before and as a result of that we have brand new listeners coming to Big Finish and hopefully from there they will go on to listen to a few of the other series the Big Finish have to offer and then eventually over time they will probably become addicted to Big Finish and start spending lots of money on the many different series I know from experience so therefore the whole concept of fan service when it comes to Big Finish is alright, especially when you have episodes the likes of this, having two different eras of Doctor Who meeting within the audio drama format, as one of the other main selling points of Big Finish as a company is their capability to do stuff that the TV show can never do. And an episode where you have the 10th Doctor and 4th Doctor meeting is something that could never happen on screen, especially with the 4th Doctor looking like how he did back in the 1970s, meaning that when you have an audio drama episode the likes of this doing exactly that. It is a lovely novelty and a treat for Doctor Who fans and something of which that a number of years ago we would never expect to happen. However at the same time there is a little bit of a flaw with multi-doctor stories and of course within the classic series they were used to symbolise an anniversary or a special event within Doctor Who history and there is a little bit of a problem with them when normally you have these doctors meeting there's references to their different adventures and eras left right and centre. However the actual plot itself Itself isn't particularly too exciting. I think that some of the previous multi-doctor stories on Big Finish are perhaps evidence to that. I think that they are lovely when it comes to references and seeing the doctors interacting. However, the story itself is either very techno babble and very timey-wimey, or simply not as interesting as you initially hoped it would be when going into the episode. Out of Time is a little bit of an exception to that, as we have a story that I feel has reason to exist. It's not a multi-doctor Doctor story that is just there for the sake of it. We have two Doctors meeting that initially you think these are two very different incarnations. However, they are united by a rather familiar theme, and that is the whole concept of the future. And where is this particular incarnation of the Doctor going next? For example, for the fourth Doctor, as portrayed by Tom Baker, within his timeline he has basically just experienced the events of the Deadly Assassin. He's become the president of Gallifrey, he's faced off of the Master, but also at the same time he has very recently in his timeline seen the departure of Sarah Jane Smith, and as a result they are very large boots to fill. Likewise you have the tenth Doctor that has just came from the events within Doctor Who series 4. He's just departed from Donna, having never to be able to see her again due to the events of that story and the memory 
wipe and all of that, but also at the same time, this whole concept of the Time Lord Victorious and the Tenth Doctor becoming more serious and more stern and realising that he is the last Time Lord and he can do whatever he wants. And as a result, we have a more serious version of the Tenth Doctor and one that believes he can do everything and anything, but the future is uncertain. He believes that his life is coming to an end and he doesn't know where he's going to travel to next. And as a result, we see both of these incarnations going to the Chapel of Contemplation in order to seek a little bit of advice for the future, meaning the whole episode is surrounded by the Chapel of Contemplation and it is a really lovely environment for the story itself. It's a great atmosphere and the whole concept of having a cathedral that can basically travel through time and open doors on whatever planet it wants, be it a lovely peaceful and tranquil world or in fact a world that has been ravaged by war. The chapel can open its doors and welcome people in and those people can essentially have counselling and figure out what are they going to do next and that is a similar case for the Doctor. And of course not only that we also have the inclusion of the Daleks which I think makes complete sense throughout this story. We have two of the most iconic incarnations of the Doctor meeting for and as a result we need a worthy foe to face off with them and the Daleks are definitely a good opposition because we have that parallel between classic series and new series once again. We have the Supreme Dalek and we have the classic series Daleks and in all honesty it doesn't contribute to the plot whatsoever. The only thing it does contribute to this story is a really lovely looking cover art having the two different variations of Dalek, the two different variations of TARDIS box and the two different variations of Doctor. It definitely once again delivers to the fan service. However, from the plot perspective it really doesn't contribute much. You can't really tell what classic Dalek is a classic Dalek and what new series Dalek is a new series Dalek. Nicholas Briggs does a very good job of presenting the Daleks but also at the same time Matt Fitton does a very good job of writing them. They feel like a threat. They go around the chapel exterminating people but also at the same time they are very menacing within the audio drama format and it's lovely to see these two different incarnations going off and doing their own thing and trying to fight against the Daleks. There is a lovely moment where the Doctor believes the Tenth Doctor that is. He believes that he has more experience compared to that of the Fourth Doctor and the Fourth Doctor turns around and says yes you've been travelling for longer but because of that you've experienced more things and imagine what you've forgotten which I thought was a really lovely idea because it's shown that this Doctor is yes very different and experienced lots of things but also at the same time the Fourth Doctor can arguably be a little bit more precise. A bit of a compliment to Nicholas Briggs in there as well because I in fact listen to this story as I usually do with my headphones in on the laptop and then the day later I decided to potter around my room doing a little bit of cleaning and as a result I in fact listened to Out of Time again. However this time I wired it up to my turntable record speakers and the booming voice of the Supreme Dalek is incredible, very threatening, very menacing especially when you accompany that with the environment of the Chapel of Contemplation because it really does echo and it sounds like the Supreme Dalek is within the room with you. So an absolute brilliant job from the directing and sound design perspective. Of course, one of the other main selling points for multi-Doctor stories is being able to experience something very unusual, and that is the Doctor interacting with himself. And one of the things that I really don't like about multi-Doctor stories is often that we have stories that are a multi-Doctor episode. However, the Doctors go off and do their own thing, and really in the whole perspective of the story itself, they only have one or two scenes together. And within those scenes, normally they are having a go at each other, or believing that one incarnation is better than the other, and it's kind of just two bickering children. What I really like about this story and the way that Matt Fitton has written the episode is that it is absolutely packed with interaction and not only that we have a fair balance between the two incarnations meaning that if you are a fan of new series Doctor Who or classic series Doctor Who solely there is lots of things on offer for you. I think that it balances it very nice between both classic series and new series because we start off with a lovely moment with the Tenth Doctor excellently written displaying that personality and then one once that scene is over, we hop to Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor, and then we have a lovely moment with him, and then we hop back to the tenth Doctor again, and it constantly hops between them until they eventually come together. And what I love about this is that we don't have a case of two different incarnations of the Doctor doing their own thing, believing that their incarnation is better, and as a result, kind of the actors feel like they are pitted against each other, trying to outperform each other. This time round, we have a lovely two-hand story where the effort is equally presented 
talented on both sides, with David Tennant doing an absolutely incredible job as the Tenth Doctor, and it is lovely to finally see that he seems to be comfortable with the audio drama format, and of course Tom Baker as the Fourth Doctor, performing as excellently as ever. I dare say that we get to see the more humorous side of the Fourth Doctor throughout this episode, which again is a joy to listen to, so it means that there is that perfect balance in between, and both of the Doctors work incredibly well together. Not to delve too far into the actual narrative itself, because after all, this is only a one-hour story, and I want to leave lots of things a mystery for you to discover yourself. What I will say is there is a lovely ending moment for this episode, where after the events, after they've inevitably defeated the Daleks, we see the two Tardises and the two Doctors stood on the beach together, just having a little moment and talking about life, and there's a few little exchanges between the different incarnations, talking about their particular timelines, and them kind of giving advice to each other, and it's lovely to have Tom giving advice to David, and then David giving advice to Tom. It feels like a love letter to the eras, and it feels like something that does have heart, almost breaking the fourth wall, because you know that those actors actually mean it. It's not just them speaking in character. It's lovely to have an interaction the likes of that, and having a few relatable moments between them as well, and a few rather heartbreaking references, which I'm going to leave out of this review. However, it was really lovely to see it mentioned, because I thought it would have. I knew it would have been mentioned, but I wasn't quite prepared for it to happen. I'm very happy that it did. So yes, thank you Matt Finn for writing a lovely ending scene that really displays once again the strengths of this story and the strengths of these two very different incarnations of the Doctor. And I've not even mentioned what the Daleks are up to throughout this story, which part of it is going to be left a mystery. However, what I will say is basically the Daleks are after the Cathedral of Contemplation, because this episode is set within the Dalek Wars with the Draconians and Orgorons and all of that jazz, and as a result they want to use the Cathedral of Contemplation as a weapon, because of course they do. So references to both classic series and new series Doctor Who, and that kind of plays into the final act as well. It's not particularly too key to the actual story itself, just nice to have a few throwaway lines in there to represent both eras within the show's history and again it's something that only Big Finish can do and it was an absolute joy to listen to. Of course the only negative of this story is that it is really bloody good and as a result the other two stories as a part of this trilogy have a lot to live up to. All I will say is I hope that all the criticisms I've said about multi-doctor stories throughout this review aren't repeated within the next two releases as a part of this series. I'm very much looking forward to the interaction between the sixth and tenth doctors because I think that will be very interesting. I think there may be a little bit of an argument between them. I feel like they will get off on the wrong footing because I can't really think how Colin or at least Sixy would react to a Doctor from his very distant future, and to be honest, I would always love to see an episode between six and nine. So overall, for Out of Time, as written by Matt Fitton, a really, really enjoyable story, and I say that with a lot of heart. I think that this is a story that is perfect for fans of both classic series and new series Doctor Who, and David Tennant and Tom Baker pull out absolutely incredible performances. So if you are a fan of Big Finish and have been listening for years, this is a perfect release to listen to and purchase, and likewise, if you are looking for a release to get into Big Finish, this is equally a brilliant release to purchase and listen to as your first ever experience of the audio drama format. It's only one hour long, the narrative itself is not too complex, it's easy to follow, it's a lot of fun and just thank you Big Finish for creating a story the likes of this that is accessible for every single type of Doctor Who fan and as always is a joy to listen to. So thank you very much for watching this review, I hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the Host Productions for brand new Doctor Who content each and every week. And of course on that note, I shall see you all next time. Bye for now. And yes, I did get my hair cut, in case you haven't noticed throughout this video. It's been a while, I think three years, but hey, the new style. Woo!